There are many ancient monuments found all over the Earth which possess extraordinarily precise solar and lunar alignments. Ingenious designs, often many thousands of years old, constructed from stones sometimes quarried, cut, and transported to the sites from many miles away. This movement of megaliths was accomplished using techniques or technology as yet not understood, and to date, many of these megalithic stone placements are perceived as near-impossible feats of ancient engineering. And although many impressive examples of monuments which track the sun can be found to have originated from many different civilizations, the most notable of antiquity, most famous for a seemingly obsessive level of monuments devoted to the observing of the sun's path, was undoubtedly the Neolithics. One has to wonder, why was there such a fixation? Was the motivation for this mass of undertakings of a tragic nature? Was it out of fear? Fear created by a memory of a catastrophic event, possibly involving the sun's powerful emittance of radiation. Maybe they experienced the consequences of an ancient warming cycle. We may never know. Yet the most important question in our field is not why these volumes of solar-aligned relics were created, but how. How did our ancient ancestors, claimed as having existed over 10,000 years ago, construct such precisely positioned granges, hinges, barrows, and sun daggers? Something we have previously covered, an incredible type of sundial, which tracked a sunspot across the wall of an ancient cave, with each month, solstice and new year, precisely marked out across the walls. Yet the sundials in question in this video are a group of far more familiarly designed dials left by the Neolithics. These sun-tracking dials can be found across the Neolithic sites of Ireland, Scotland, Orkney, and England. First discovered by an American by the name of Martin Brennan, a 39-year-old from New York. Not only did he discover the true function of curbstones located in Noth, codename K7, K15, among others. He also cracked the earliest form of writing while studying the Irish Stone Age artwork. Earlier this year, a theory emerged on the internet by writer and journalist Ben Gagna. He suggested that there was an image of a swan on curbstone 15 at Nonth. He claimed that while examining a photo he had taken of K15, he flipped it upside down and saw something no one had ever seen before the faint but unmistakable image of a swan in profile. The true meaning or purpose of the curbstones had for a long time been heavily debated within certain circles. The intriguing cup and ring marks had been known of for some time. Yet as previously mentioned, though the most popular theory of the design on K15 was the claim that it was the depiction of a swan glyph, this hypothesis was rejected even before Martin's unarguably accurate translation was discovered. Martin identified the sundial while examining a passage mount in the Boyne Valley. And although sundials thousands of years old have been excavated throughout Europe, many specialist individuals reviewing Martin's finds believe that the sundial discovered in County Meath is the oldest and possibly most important ever found. According to Martin, who has been studying megalithic Irish art for the last 10 years, Ireland's megalithic tombs are suffering from appalling neglect. Some of the most important passage mounds excavated previously have been ignored or, conveniently, completely sealed up. Martin's discoveries are undoubtedly remarkable and are of tremendous value to our ongoing deciphering of ancient antiquity and its past civilizations. It is a journey of discovery we find highly compelling. There are countless astonishing relics still to be unearthed in Peru, rediscovered within the modern age. Like that of Machu Picchu, long forgotten, engulfed by nature, still hidden within our past. With those which are rediscovered, simply dismissed en masse by cult-like actions of many of our modern institutions, most of which, at a loss to explain the advanced nature of many of these relics, simply labeling said sites as pre-Incan. Peru is home to some of the most exquisite polygonal stonework to be found anywhere on the planet. Additionally, some of this inexplicable stoneworking incorporated some of the most enormous of stones into their construction. Furthermore, the Inca Road, a ruin we have previously covered, 
long ignored and rarely discussed, it is the largest man-made structure ever found, dwarfing the Great Wall of China, stretching an astounding 25,000 miles, once connecting many of the most inexplicable sites found within the country. It seems Peru was once a very important place, and possibly the capital of a civilization now lost long ago within history. Many of the unexplained ancient ruins we cover also express a near obsession with the movement of the planets amongst the stars. And a huge portion of these ruins were either celestially aimed or had some form of astronomical significance built into their design. And our next subject of interest is of no exception. Known as Chankyo, we feel it is a demonstration of exceptional astronomical knowledge, abilities far out of the reach of its currently academically claimed constructor. Rivaling even that of Stonehenge, it is an ancient monumental complex, located along the Peruvian coastal desert, in a place known as the Casma Sechen Basin, within the Ancash Department of Peru. Atop a hill, there are 13 towers regularly spaced, forming a toothed horizon. What is incredible about this undertaking, however, is that throughout the year, if one is positioned in the correct place, one can witness the sunrises between each of these ridges, with solstices also significantly highlighted by their builders. The question is, how did a people place centuries ago within known history, and thus, with a far more limited understanding of astronomical precisions, accomplish the building of such an enormous ruin, aligned with the sun with such accuracy? Just like that of the precision displayed in other ancient ruins, perfectly aligned to cardinal points, the Chankyo is yet another example of an ancient civilization's workmanship, far more advanced and far more capable than that of the culture academia currently claims as the maker of said relic. From the east and west, investigators designated two possible observation points. From these vantages, the 300-meter-long spread of the towers corresponds to the rising and setting positions of the sun over the year. On the winter solstice, the sun would rise behind the leftmost tower of Chankyo and rise behind each of the towers until it reached the rightmost tower six months later on the summer solstice. Inhabitants of Chankyo would have been able to determine the date with an accuracy within a day or two simply by observing the sunrise or sunset from these correct observational points. The 13 towers have been interpreted as an astronomical observatory, built in the 4th century BC. However, we believe, with such incredible abilities and knowledge of the processional positions required to have constructed these towers, they are far out of the reach of our own well-studied currently claimed ancient ancestors. Claimed as that of the Chasma Sechen culture, we however disagree with this posit, simply on the grounds of its astonishing nature and the capabilities of its past constructor. It is a place which we find highly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons, somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny. Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance, but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus, preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites 
no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write, a revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone, cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced mines, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such backbreaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. The megalithic marvels of lore, very rarely studied, academically explored, or publicized, yet regardless of this, remains one of the most curious and intriguing ruins of the Neolith Menhir age. Not only still in existence, but with many Menhir still erect, still standing tall across the landscape to this day, a legacy left to us by a now lost civilization. A collection of curious, kooky, and oftentimes mischievously graffitied prehistoric menhirs. The menhirs were often elaborately carved, and due to the unexplainable scale of some of the stones, cut, quarried, and eventually raised along the valley, it is clearly an example of an inexplicable ruin an ancient relic left to us, once created using unknown technologies at an unknown time within history. A now lost, yet once highly advanced ancestor. Impossible for the current academically claimed culture, which is clearly a fallacy within modern paradigm. Some of the inexplicably huge stones incorporated into these sites are now being found scattering our planet. Like that of the plain of jars located in Laos an unusual, enigmatic site we have also covered in the past, possesses stonework from megalithic blocks of inexplicable sizes. These gigantic stone carvings, menhirs and jars, some still in astonishing conditions, are a testament to what our lost ancestors were once capable of, and due to the immense size of the stones they could control, have successfully left their mark far into an unknown future are present. The channel feels a duty, clearly as a far less capable civilization, 
that we do not withhold the evidence for their existence, which has been a great disservice to those who deserve the truth. Multi-ton menhirs are located all across the Bada Valley, but not just the Bada Valley. Menhirs can be found across the globe, located in many countries, even in New Zealand in Rodney County. The erosion of many of the world's menhirs stonework, we feel, is indicative of incredible aging, and as such, possibly from the same era as the Bada Valley's mysterious menhirs. Yet regardless of whoever made these sculptures, there will never be any academically admittance to the evidence that these particular stone workings are found all over the planet. Yet regardless of anyone's opinions regarding their past use, a function undertaken at a time so long ago, we may never know the true purpose of what our distant ancestors may have been trying to tell us. All those millennia ago, only time will tell. The menhirs and the hinges found worldwide, many now widely known about, have blown a few holes into the hull of the sinking ship that is academic paradigm. The fact that these menhirs are no less common and no less scattered across the globe merely lays another nail in the coffin for the timelines academia put forward for the migrations of man, and even our beginnings, for to have these unusual megaliths everywhere, their builders must have been everywhere too. A highly advanced, highly capable, once world-going ancient civilization an extremely long time ago. One which we find highly compelling.